All right. Well, that leaves me on the hot seat. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> hello, uh, everybody, and welcome to the four-year adjusted cohort advanced processing and reporting training. Uh, my name is Paul Higgins. Uh, I work as a data analyst at CSIS, supporting CalPADS. And just so you know, you may know me from my better known videos like <laughs> Outcomes and 2018-2019 cohort training. Uh, uh, and I say that in jest, of course, but uh, those videos are scheduled to break 300 views any day now, I swear. <laughs> uh, but I am joined today by the most excellent Gary Gerwer and Alex Venriquez, both also data analysts working at CSIS supporting CalPADS. Um, and the, the introduction is a little bit funny, but we do still have a certain expectation of who should be here in this training today. So as we get started, I would like to offer a poll up so we can make sure that we're talking to the right group. and to adjust our pacing and everything else as necessary. So please just take a minute to answer these uh, real quick questions. And I'm gonna stop talking here for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna share the results now. And let's see, it looks like um, perfect. Most of you are exactly who we're targeting for this training. It is an advanced course. It looks like you guys are um, very seasoned users, lots of four or more years. Hmm. Um, you did cohort last year, a lot of you. A couple said that they didn't take the part one of this training. Um, you're welcome to stick around for this. It is an advanced course. We moved very fast um, and cover a lot of ground. Uh, this is going to be a recorded session that we will post on YouTube. So if you want to hop off and uh, take the level one first, um, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, but otherwise, uh, like I said, if you if you do stick around and you're you haven't taken level one, you're you know you might some of this might go over your head. Okay. Any anything else, Paul? You want to say about the results? Nope, I'm good about that. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. All right, okay. and we're going to move on now. The way we designed the training was to have a training presentation, which is what you see on the screen, but then also a training workbook which presents you most of the relevant facts, pertinent information in a more streamlined reference manner. And it also contains our reference uh, job aids, as well as the scenarios we're gonna be dealing with, the um, case studies. So we need you to have that available. And I think that we have a link available to post. There it is, R Angela Reddy just posted that. We have the workbook link in the chat box. So open your chat box if you do not have your workbook out. Uh, or did not download it or print it out. Uh, we understand people are working from home. Printing it out is optional. Uh, but we do need you to have it available during the training as a virtual or, uh, or in, in person live hard copy. It doesn't matter to me. Um, now, anybody who has worked in CalPEDS for any length of time has taken CalPEDS trainings. And that's an assumption. But I, I, I feel very strongly about that, that you have taken trainings in some way, shape, or form. And in those trainings previously, it's been a one-way street. I talk to you, you listen. Uh, but anybody who has taken this training previously understands that we're trying to revamp our training, that we're trying to make it less asynchronous and more of a conversation. So during this training, we'll throw out you know, a poll every once in a while. We're going to ask you to interact. Uh, and, and we just want you to understand we're modernizing the, the training so you get more out of it. We're trying to make it more relatable, more adult learning uh, strategies, et cetera. And to that end, let's go on to objectives. Now in the, uh, for this training, it's gonna be streamlined as Angela said today. So we have three objectives we wanna hit today. And one is we're gonna do a high level, top down, a very just quick overview of the processes and the timeline. So that way you understand what's at play with the cohort reporting. Second, we are going to identify changes to the cohort processing and reporting in CalPEDS for the 2020-2021 uh, academic year in reporting. And third, we're going to apply what you know and what you may have learned today into case studies where you can actually put what you know into use and come up with answers and then we will work from there. Now, throughout the training, uh, I ask that you, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat box because we will hit those at the end uh, as time allows. Uh, so if you have a, a pressing question that comes up as we're going through a slide, just type it in. We may cover the answer later, but if you, if you need it answered, please ask it in the chat box and we will hit it on the way out. Let's start out with what is 
cohort membership. And here's the overview. Uh, you establish membership. Membership is what determines when you're reported and when you are considered to be in high school, because when you start high school, you have a four-year window to complete. So to establish what a membership is, you have to, in CalPEDS, first locate the first instance of a high school enrollment, and that's grades 9 through 12. Second, you have to verify the enrollment status is either primary or short-term, and if it is short-term, that enrollment length must exceed 30 calendar days because then it becomes a de facto primary enrollment and it can be used to establish uh, the, the cohort membership. If it is less than 30 days, you cannot use it to establish membership. And uh, third, you check the enrollment start date against the cohort membership job aid, which is in your workbook, uh, to see when they are expected to complete. And again, they have a four-year window. It is that simple. If you follow these three steps and you use the job aid in your workbook, you can establish membership. All right, next. Speaking of that job aid, we've gone ahead and made a slide on it to discuss it. And if you look on screen, that first membership job aid image where it says membership job aid number one, that is the primary job aid to establish membership uh, for a student. And I modified it a little bit from last year to be more inclusive. And if you look at it uh, at the, well, if you actually look at it a little bit more closely, I don't think on screen you can see it as well, uh, but in the top section where it says grade level, right below there, it says four-year cohort reporting year, and it provides what year each cohort is supposed to report. So using this tool is as simple as, and we're gonna use the, the red band to explain it because that's our current reporting year. If a student began their grade nine year in the 1718 academic year, you can find that academic year on the left-hand side of the table. You follow that across to the grade nine in that red box and you can see that a grade nine student beginning in the 1718 academic year is expected to complete grade 12 in the 2021 academic year. So if, if uh, a student joined this cohort in grade 10, their grade 10 year would be in the 1819. Grade 11 should be 1920, grade 12, 2021. So it's just a little bit more inclusive. The second membership job aid uh, is that first job aid collapsed down. And it makes the assumption that you're looking at each one of those color blocks, you're looking at an entire cohort year. You're not looking at the details of who's in it but you're assuming grade nine and 14, 15 is ending in 17, 18. Grade nine and 17, 18 finishing in 2021. And that big red star is just to, you know, point out obviously where we're at for the reporting year. So the, the membership job aides have been with us for uh, a couple of years and they just modified a little bit. Uh, so let's move on to outcomes. Now outcomes, you first need to establish membership. So we're doing this kind of in a, in a logical progression. So once you have established a student's membership, you know what year they're supposed to complete. And you have until August 15th of that year to code the exit in CalPATS. Now the job aid that is provided on the next slide and in your workbook uh, describes all of the possible exit codings in CalPATS for a student leaving your school. It then groups those exit codings into the outcome buckets. And those buckets are what are reported uh, for the ACGR. Now, one important note, and I, I, you'll see this stressed several times throughout this training today because it has been an issue this year a little bit, uh, that all the data entry for the cohort must be complete no later than August 27th of 2021. Why is that? Because it'll stop running the next day. And if you don't get the data in, the reports cannot run to incorporate the data. So you could have a 100% grad rate, but if you didn't put the data in by August 27th, that will not ever, ever be reflected. And that's a bad thing. So get your data entry done by August 27th. Okay, pure and simple. Now on screen, you see the outcome job aid and the outcome job aid is kind of ugly in comparison to the membership job aid because it just has to communicate a lot of different codes in a very small space. 
But on screen, you see in that left-hand column are the, the outcome buckets. And each bucket, one column in, uh, is associated to a series of exit codes. Those are the exit codes and the completion codes that comprise that outcome uh, bucket. Uh, it's very simple to use. Uh, you know, all you have to do is find the right exit coding and you're, you can see the bucket right there. Now, in the middle of it, you see that big black vertical bar that reads August 15th, 2021. That's stating that all of the exit dates posted to CalPETS, you know, you say the student is an E23100, a high school graduate, the date that is assigned to that exit must be on or before August 15th of 2021 to be considered in this cohort reporting. If you say that they're an E23100 high school graduate on August 16th, 2021, even though the, the process is still running, they will not be considered a high school graduate because they were not a high school graduate by the end of the graduate reporting cycle, which is on 8-15-2021. So any, uh, that August 15, 2021 also marks a break point that if the exit coding is not dated on or before August 15, 2021, it's not going to be included. But if a student re-enrolls, if they were... Uh, if you have them as an E-155 or an E-230-480 uh, where they didn't complete all their requirements and you know they're coming back. If an enrollment exists in CalPATS using enrollment start date between now and census day, which is October 6th this year, I believe, and that, and that enrollment entry is in CalPATS by the end of the cohort reporting period, they will be considered a still enrolled student. Okay, that's the only exception to that 815 rules that if you enter in an enrollment into CalPADS after 815, but before uh, 827, and it's using an enrollment start date before census day, they'll be still enrolled. Okay, uh, now that's that job aid. Again, it's in your workbook on page seven. And we will be using those here in a little bit. So now that we have powered through uh, membership and outcomes very quickly, I'm going to pass this off for process overview to Alex. Thank you, Paul. Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to go over the process. And this hasn't changed from last year. But because the cohort reports generate differently from your certification reports, we think it's important that we go through the process so that we know what to expect when we're looking at the reports and when to expect to see the changes displayed. So it all starts with data that you post in CalPADS. We're talking SCNR, SINF, CELA, all the data that you post in CalPADS gets, gets stored in what we call the ODS database. From there, on a nightly basis, CalPATS is pulling the data that is posted in the ODS database, and it's using that data to generate your cohort reports, right? Now, the expectation is that you or someone at your LEA is reviewing the cohort reports um, and validating that the data is true and accurate for your district. Now, if there are any changes that need to be made, if there's any discrepancies within your report, you can make any updates in CalPATS within the cohort processing window. However, and this is the important part, is that you need to wait until that nightly processing takes place in order for your reports to be reflecting the changes that you made in the system. What this means is that if you post data this morning, and even if your files say revision complete, your cohort reports aren't going to reflect those changes that this same day, you have to wait for that nightly processing to take place in order for this process to run again and have the cohort reports reflect your data. OK, um, and this processing, this nightly processing is going to run. It is running now. It started April 12th and it's going to continue until August 27th. And on August 27th, just like Paul mentioned, that is the last day that CalPES is going to run this nightly process. And so it's important that you have all your data in CalPADS by August 27th, because that's what's going to be included in your cohort report and used for accountability. 
the thing that I wanted to also point out here is that this date range that you're seeing in the middle of your screen here um, is specific for the 2021 cohort year. What I mean by that, and Gary will dive deeper in detail on this in future slides, but what we have now in CalPADS is the ability to run future cohort years. And those future cohort years will continue to run. The nightly process will continue to run for them after August 27th. But for the 2021 cohort year, which is due this year, that the last day that the nightly processing will run is on August 27th. I know we're, we're, we're hammering this point, but it, it is important. We want to make sure that you have all your data in there, which leads us to the next slide. The next slide talks about all the timelines and the difference between each date range and why they're important. And so we're going to start off with the cohort date range. And this spans from July 1st of 2017 until August 15 of 2021. Any student records that fall within this date range are what are used for cohort reports. We're talking um, SCNR records that are going to be used to determine the membership, um, what are going to be used to determine the outcomes, any SPRG records, um, this, any student records are, uh, that fall within the state range are what are being used to determine cohort um, data. Next, we come to the cohort processing period. And this is what we just talked about in the previous slide. This spans from April 12th of 2021 through August 27th of 2021. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, this is the time frame where you're going to have your nightly processing take place. And you have this time frame to make any updates in CalPads that are going to be reflected in your cohort reports. Okay, the last date to enter any data in CalPads that are going to be reflected in your cohort reports is August 27th. On August 27th at 10 p.m., CalPads is going to do its nightly shutting down maintenance routine. And that is the last time that it's going to run that nightly process for the cohort. When you come back into CalPads on August 28th, that data is final. The cohort reports are frozen. And so like Paul mentioned, any data that you post in CalPads August 28th and onward are not going to be part of your cohort reports. Right. The reason why it's so important is because we have LEAs that have submitted ticket to us saying my dashboard says that I have zero grads and CalPAT shows that I have graduates. And that's because they submitted their graduates or whatever data impacts their, their dashboard once the cohort data was final. And so you can submit data to CalPADS on August 28th and onwards. CalPADS is going to accept it. It's going to post it but your cohort reports are going to be frozen and they're not going to be uh, updated with your changes. So again, the last day that you can make changes that are going to be reflected on your cohort reports is August 27th. I think I've hammered that home. <laughs> awesome. So question one says, what happens to your cohort report if you make changes on August 28th? And the answer is, after nightly processing, the reports remain the same. 97% of you got it, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so again, last day to make changes, August 27th. Any changes you make August 28th and onward will not be included in your cohort reports. And question two says, how soon can you start evaluating your cohort reports? The answer is right now. The reports are running, processing window is ongoing, so if you haven't started already, please <laughs> start looking at those reports, start validating, um, and, and it'll be easier on you by August 27th. Yeah, I can see where people would think you have to wait till after graduation, right? But you, you know, Alex is going to go into what to look out for on those reports, and uh, you can look for dropouts right now, and um, still enrolled, and well, I guess not still enrolled, but um, the different dropouts, uh, and she'll, she'll go over some of that, but you can, uh, um, it's running right now and you can make updates now and it's uh, updated nightly. 